The Wild and Scenic Obed River The state of Tennessee is proud and aggressive about its wilderness areas and state parks. They designated the Obed River in a narrow boundary on either side, a wildlife management area. They call it the Wild and Scenic Obed River in local literature. I lifted the title for this vignette directly from that most beautiful of full names because it captures the, that romanticism the river holds for me. This is another story of one of my canoe adventures with my friend Susie and my two chocolate labs of that time, Cassie and Chloe. The Obed runs from Crossville, Tennessee in the direction of the Frozen Head State Park on the plateau west of and above the Tennessee River Valley. Friends had invited us to go on a weekend camping trip with them at Frozen Head. I had frequented this area of the plateau for some years before with my late wife. We were looking for backcountry roads and streams along trails where the dogs could run free and we all could splash in the water. I noticed the Obed River because I was smitten with its full name. We swam in it near the, where the Obed empties into the Emory River. When I saw the proximity of Frozen Head to the river, I told Susie I'd like to include a canoe trip that weekend so I could boast I had been on the river. It was early April in the spring of 09. There had been a great deal of rain that spring, and this was a nice sunny weekend that had been a welcome break from the cold winter and wet spring weather. Susie and I had only known each other less than a couple years and had just a few canoe trips together the year before. I always took Cassie and Chloe with me on any adventure because they were always so excited and who doesn't like to hang out with that kind of enthusiasm for life's experiences. The other campers preferred to hike that day, but one couple agreed to pick us up at the end of our trip. They drove with us on the way over so I could show them where we would arrive. I estimated we would be a couple hours and would call for pickup when done. They went back to camp and I drove my crew of water lovers and gear to the, to the launch up river. We loaded up the canoe and pushed off and away. The water, water was flowing fast and we moved along at a fun pace. But this was the easy part. I had read about some narrows and rapids, but the difficulty had not been rated very high in this section of the river. Well, I guess that rating or my experience did not take into account the amount of rainfall we had been having. It wasn't long when the river picked up its pace. We frequently took on water and had a few mild spills that began to give me a concern. We all had life vests, including Cassie and Chloe, but that water rushing near uh, the narrows, rushing the narrows, it was a bit much for the loaded canoe. I made everyone abandon ship on several approaches so I could pass the empty canoe over the rapids holding the stern by hand or by rope. They'd walk around the hazards, then we'd all reboard after. This slowed us down considerably, and the estimated two hours passed rapidly. Up until then, we had seen no one else on the river when we came upon two guys in their kayaks on the bank. We, we stopped to chat. They were local off-duty police officers in every door, everyday outdoor dress, except for their holstered guns. They acted with authority as if they were on duty and warned us about the copperheads in the area. We continued on. We were slowed by more obstacles, and they passed us in their more maneuverable kayaks. We waved, and they kept going. We got going again and had to negotiate more intimidating rapids. We sank but good this time in deeper rushing water. The canoe got away and Susie lost her sunglasses. I swam and caught up to her holding on to a log and she was breathing deeply. The canoe and paddles were nearby. I tipped the canoe and raised it to spill out the water. We again loaded up and continued. I was so grateful that Susie shrugged off her shock of that dunking and got in without a fuss. I don't recall how he was able to get the dogs back in. We caught up to our police friends and I thought we were playing a game of leapfrog. By, but this time they were on the bank and were not so cocky. In fact, they seemed shook up. 
They must have had a difficult time on the rapids and told us they had enough and were walking out. I had no idea what they planned to do with their kayaks. I would have liked to have quit myself but had no idea how I'd get us out or back to camp, so I figured we'd plow on as planned. As if I as if I hadn't had enough of that trip by now, the worst of it was yet to come. We entered an open section of water that was a relief from the rapids. The section was perhaps a hundred feet long when the water turned rapidly to the right to go around the boulder at the, at the left bank. <laughs> the boulder was as big as a small house. I can't recall why I couldn't make that turn, and we plowed head on into that boulder with quite a jolt. The current turned the canoe sideways against the boulder. I saw the water rush over the gunwale and was struck with fear. The canoe sank. The current flipped it over on top of us and pushed it down on us and down underwater. Susie and the dogs were scrambling and clawing at me. I was in shock and near panic myself. I must have had some kind of footing because I was able to push up and strain with all my might my general and could muster. The canoe did not move for a seeming eternity, and then it did raise up and was pulled around the boulder by the current. We came to the surface gasping. Susie looked at me in shock and fear, and I suppose I did the same to her. I looked around to get my bearings. The bank was close, and I pulled her to it. The dog scrambled away. We pulled ourselves up onto the bank and gathered our wits. There were no injuries other than our dog scratches. Cassie and Chloe made it back to us, so we were all safe. There was one paddle on the bank, but no sign of the canoe. Then I realized I lost my glasses in that scuffle. How the heck am I going to get through the weekend and drive home, never mind get off this hazardous river? I climbed up our treacherous boulder to scout for the canoe. I am quite nearsighted, so I pulled Susie up to help. Her eyes are much better, but neither could see it. Once again, I could see no choice but to press on as best we could. I told Susie we have our vest and we'll float on our backs to try to catch up with the canoe. I said I can't have, it can't have gone far and we'll hang up on rocks or a tree. Once again, Susie was a remarkably brave and agreed to go on. I thought anyone else would plant their behind and wait for the rescue copter. Cassie and Chloe were reluctant and whimpering, but when we floated away, they jumped in and the water and followed. Cassie is all, was always the independent leader and calmly swam. Chloe is a clinger and paddled furiously and whimpered. I felt bad but could do nothing but encourage her. We floated for hundreds of yards. In a way, it was less frightening already being in the water rather than getting thrown into it. Then we came to an island up that split the river. Oh no, I thought. Which side do we take? If we choose wrong, we'll miss the canoe. I chose what seemed to be the larger channel, and we went to left. I didn't know how long the split would last, so I didn't want to send Susie right. As brave as she is, I didn't know if she would have separated anyway. Another several hundred, hundred yards floating down river, and I saw the yellow canoe in the distance up against the bank. What an immense relief. I still don't know how much further to the takeout, and I did not want to float there in this water that was remarkably, not intoler intolerably cold, but getting colder. When we caught up to the canoe, I could not believe my eyes. The other paddle was not but a few feet away. I would hate to lose those paddles. They are probably worth something, and certainly are to me. They are classic old towns, with the original labels still laminated into the natural finish on the wood layers. I bought them when I was very young, so they are probably as old as... bought them used when I was young, so they are probably as old as I am. Once again, we all loaded up and continued on. The river was thankfully more kind for the remainder of the trip that turned out to be still another hour to go anyway. It had been five hours already, so we figured we'd be making 
our other campers quite concerned. We did finally arrive as intended in the canoe and safe and not in pieces. We were a bit lighter for the few belongings we lost and the extreme amount of exercise. I don't recall how we contacted our friends to come get us. Surely my cell phone did not survive. In those days, I packed it in a Ziploc bag and tucked it in a pocket in my sports swimsuit with a Velcro closure. The friends did come and had been and had been worried. We went back to camp to warm up, calm down, and ravenously eat dinner and tell our story. Susie and I slept well that night for sure. Susie drove us home. I found an old pair of glasses to get by with, and in a week I had new ones. At that point, I was able to look back at that trip with a new perspective and feeling of pure exhilaration and joy. I have told the highlights of this story many times, and particularly to anyone who mentions the wild and scenic Obed River or even a canoe trip. Anytime some minor tragedy happens to Susie when she is with me, such as bumping a branch on a hike, she'll accuse me of jokingly trying to kill her again. If she is with me when I relate this adventure to someone, she will say the same thing. I lie to my listeners that it wasn't that bad, but regardless, I have never witnessed such bravery in anyone as I did that day in Susie. It was remarkable how she pressed on. I compare that bravery to the two police officers who turned turned tail and ran. She usually contradicts me, and then I'll remind her that the adventure gave us a story to tell of survivorship, and she should take pride in our bravery and selflessness. It's a memory we will never forget, and that will bind us together as long as we live. In part, I tell the story here so the ultimate survivor can continue to reminisce this adventure after the other is gone.